Mark Ruffalo American Actor Mark Allen Ruffalo is an American actor. He began acting in the early 1990s and first gained recognition for his work in Kenneth Lonergan's play This Is Our Youth and drama film You Can Count On Me. Born, November 22, 1967, age 56 years, Kenosha, Wisconsin, United States. Spouse, Sunrise Coiny, M., 2000. Upcoming movies, Now You See Me 3, Mickey 17, Avengers, Secret Wars, Avengers, Doomsday. Children, Keen Ruffalo, Bella Noche Ruffalo, Odette Ruffalo. Height, 1.73 meters. Award-winning actor Mark Ruffalo was born on November 22, 1967, in Kenosha, Wisconsin, of humble means to Father Frank Lawrence Ruffalo, a construction painter and Marie Rose, a bear, a stylist and hairdresser. His father's ancestry is Italian and his mother is of half-French-Canadian and half-Italian descent. Mark moved with his family to Virginia Beach, Virginia, where he lived out most of his teenage years. Following high school, Mark moved with his family to San Diego and soon migrated north, eventually settling in Los Angeles. Mark first took classes at the Stella Adler Conservatory and subsequently co-founded the Orpheus Theater Company, an equity waiver establishment, where he worked in nearly every capacity. From acting, writing, directing, and producing, to running the lights and building sets, while building his resume. Moving into film and TV, Mark's inauspicious movie debut was the drifter role of Christian in the horror opus Mirror Mirror 2, Raven Dance, 1994, and returned to the film series in the role of Joey with Mirror Mirror 3, The Voyeur, 1995. He continued on through the 1990s rather indistinctly with more secondary roles in the horror film The Dentist, 1996, starring Madman Corbin Burnson, an amusing perf in the obscure dramedy The Last Big Thing, 1996, a third build role in the Jerry Stiller slash and Mira Bickering senior comedy A Fish in the Bathtub, 1998, and the war drama ceremony. The Ritual of Love, 1976, directed by Ang Lee, bartending for nearly nearly a decade to make ends meet and discouraged enough to give it up, a chance meeting and resulting collaboration with playwright slash screenwriter Kenneth Lonergan approaching the millennium changed everything. Ruffalo won New York success in Lonergan's 1996 off-Broadway play This Is Our Youth, a story about troubled young adults. This led to his male lead in Lonergan's Oscar-winning film drama You Can Count On Me, 2000, playing the Ennier Duel brother of Laura Linney. The performance drew rave reviews and invited comparisons to an early Marlon Brando. Ruffalo never looked back. Notable roles in The Last Castle, 2001, XX slash XY. 2002, and Wind Talkers, 2002, followed, although in 2002 Ruffalo was diagnosed with an acoustic neuroma, a type of brain tumor. Though the tumor was benign, the resulting surgery led to a period of partial facial paralysis, from which he fully recovered. In 2003, Ruffalo scored leading roles alongside two popular female stars, playing a police detective opposite Meg Ryan in In the Cut, 2003 and the love interest of Gwyneth Paltrow in the comedy View from the Top, 2003. Though both films were high-profile box office disappointments, Ruffalo went on to four notable, if highly disparate, films in 2004, We Don't Live Here Anymore, 2004, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, 2004, 13 Going on 30, 2004, and Collateral, 2004 which solidified his ability to be both a popular leading man and an acclaimed ensemble player in either comedy or drama. After 2004, Ruffalo was consistently at work, with leads in popular Hollywood films and independent productions that continued to solidify him as one of film's most consistently strong actors, just like Heaven, 2005, All the King's Men, 2006, Zodiac, 2007, Reservation Road, 2007, and The Brothers Bloom, 2008. He also made his Broadway debut as Mo Axelrod in the play Awake and Sing. In 2010, Ruffalo achieved something of a breakthrough by directing the indie film Sympathy for Delicious, 2010, which won him the Special Jury Prize at the Sundance Film Festival, and co-starring as the sperm donor father to lesbian couple Annette Benning and Julianne Moore in The Kids Are All Right, 2010. 
His role in the idiosyncratic domestic comedy-slash-drama earned him Academy Award, Independent Spirit Award, Screen Actors Guild, and BAFTA nominations for Best Supporting Actor. He went on to earn two more Best Supporting Actor nominations as an Olympic-winning wrestling champion in Foxcatcher, 2014, and as a journalist working to uncover the Catholic Church sex abuse scandal in Spotlight, 2015. In 2017, the actor returned to Broadway in Arthur Miller's The Price. High-profile roles in Martin Scorsese's Shutter Island, 2010, and Londren's long-delayed film Margaret, 2011, followed before Ruffalo's appearance as Dr. Bruce Banner, a.k.a. The Hulk, in Joss Whedon's movie blockbuster The Avengers, 2012, garnering highly positive reviews for a role in which actors Eric Bana and Edward Norton could not find success in previous films made Ruffalo a box office action star, in addition to a critically acclaimed actor. He returned to the Banner-slash-Hulk role frequently in such Marvel movies as Iron Man 3, 2013, Avengers, Age of Ultron, 2015, Thor, Ragnarok, 2017, Avengers, Infinity War, 2018, Captain Marvel, 2019, and Avengers, Endgame, 2019, reunited with former co-star Gwyneth Paltrow in the sex addiction comedy drama Thanks for Sharing, 2012, he went on to earn a Golden Globe nomination for playing a bipolar dad in Infinitely Polar Bear, 2014. Ruffalo also took on the lead in Ryan Murphy's adaptation of Larry Kramer's AIDS drama Play the Normal Heart, 2014, and earned a SAG Award and Emmy nomination. He later took home the Emmy playing twin brothers, one a paranoid schizophrenic, and I know this much is true, 2020. Ruffalo has been married to actor Sunrise Coiney since 2000, the couple has three children, two sons, and a daughter. He was Louis Leterrier's original choice for the title role in The Incredible Hulk, 2008, but the studio wanted Edward Norton. Ruffalo was later cast in the role in The Avengers, 2012, and has played the role since. While appearing in the drama Awake and Sing, he was nominated for the 2006 Tony Award, New York City, for supporting or features actor in a drama. For his environmental advocacy, Mark Ruffalo received a Global Green Millennium Award and a Mira Gandhi Giving Back Foundation Award. Also chosen as one of the people who mattered by Time Magazine, 2011, studied at the Stella Adler Conservatory in Los Angeles, California. Sold his three-bedroom, 2,957-square-foot house in Los Angeles's Hollywood Hills for $1,650,000. He bought the property in 2004 for the same price, for which he later sold it. He moved his family to Calicoon, New York. Attended and graduated from First Colonial High School in Virginia Beach, Virginia. He supported Bernie Sanders in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Was in attendance at Chris Penn's funeral at Holy Cross Cemetery in Culver City, California. He is well known for his far left-wing political views and activism has worked with Gwyneth Paltrow in three films, View from the Top, 2003, The Avengers, 2012, and Thanks for Sharing, 2012. He auditioned for the role of Doctor Doom in The Fantastic Four, 1994, but was turned down. Has worked with Gwyneth Paltrow, Reese Witherspoon, Jennifer Garner, Scarlett Johansson, Kate Winslet, Jim Carrey, Kirsten Dunst, Kira Knightley, and Bradley Cooper. He was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 6777 Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California on February 8, 2024. Director David Fincher and Jennifer Garner were guest speakers at the ceremony. The Walk of Fame star is located in front of the Stella Adler Studio of Acting. Quotes With indies, all they have is their script and it's very important to them. The characters are better drawn, the story's more precise, and the experience greater than with studio films, where sometimes they fill in the script as they're shooting. For some reason, my whole life has been, you can't do this, you can't do that. The other day, I was watching these kids crossing the road, and they have these crossing guards, kids who help other kids across the road. They would never let me be a crossing guard when I was a little kid. It would come up, I'd always raise my hand, I would never get picked. They thought I was too wild, but I knew I was responsible enough, if I was given that task. The true value of somebody in this town, Hollywood, is very hard to determine. 
it's all smoke and mirrors. The whole experience of getting close to mortality changed my perspective on work. I wasn't enjoying acting before, I felt like I wasn't in charge of my career. I wasn't doing things that made me feel good. I was really bitter, I thought I deserved more, and I wasn't grateful for all the great shit that had happened to me. If you're not grateful, then it's very easy to be an asshole. After the brain tumor happened, I realized I love acting, I've always loved it, I may never get a chance to do it again. Certainly, it's very easy to fall in love with cash. If you're going to make all your decisions based on cash, you're going to have a pretty naffy career. I don't like this idea of method. I come from that school, but what I was taught was that it's your imagination. You do your homework, and you use your imagination. People use the method as a shield. It shields them from being vulnerable. I hear all these young actors who are like, I'm method, I'm gonna go live in the house, you know, I totally get it, I've done it, I've been there, but one thing I know is it kills spontaneity. They'll still give great performances, but they're not playing with the other actors, it's all about them. And spontaneity and vulnerability are gold on screen and on stage, they are the fucking magic. When Brando reaches down and picks up that glove and puts it on his hand, that is magic. You can't plan that. He is referring to a scene in On the Waterfront, 1954 Eva Marie Saint accidentally dropped a glove on set and, rather than wait for another take, Marlon Brando picked it up and put it on, without missing a line. I want to do a western. Nobody does westerns anymore. I love acting with kids, cause they're great acting partners. They're totally present. Even when they're acting.